We're on. Thank you. All right. Good morning. Monday, March 4th, Telford Road Board of Selectmen's meeting. Let's begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I have one question for Karen. Mm -hmm. On the top of page two, appointment for Laurel, is that the correct spelling of her name? That's so, I actually wrote that on Bill, yeah. If you, that, it is not, so it would be S E N. So that would be a change that needs to be Okay, done. thank you. Yeah. Uh, almost. I'll move approval as drafted. Second. Uh, with with the with the change spelling at the time. Right? Yeah. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thank you. What was it? That was it. That was quick. Only one set of minutes. How about that? Mm -hmm. All right. Chief Thompson, come on down. Good morning, Chief. Mm -hmm. We've done uh, 33 fire calls, 44 EMS calls, and six uh, service calls, totaling uh, 83 for, uh, for the year. Firefighter EMT uh, A. Hannah Croto has passed her National Registry uh, paramedic class that she's been taking over the last two years. This is something that uh, she had paid for on her own. We had paid uh, some as far as her going to uh, um, clinicals and things like that uh, for, for hours. She's still currently operating at the EMTA level until she's passed the department's uh, probationary requirements for new paramedics to make sure that she's all set to, to be up and running. The air will, will be uh, going to Kimball and Doobie's garage in Gray, Maine on April 15th. The uh, Firefighters Association will be paying for the replacement of the, the boat's polymer, as we had discussed. Any other uh, yearly welding or repairs that will be needed for the boat will take care of, will be taken care of at that time, as uh, they need to take out the engine, everything that's inside the boat to replace the, the polymer. So anything that is found that needs to be repaired will be taken care of when the boat's stripped. Also, uh, so that's on the 15th. We're hoping that by the 15th that we have ice out. Um, but you never know. If, uh, <laughs> Can we take a vote on that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all, all those in favor yeah. of ice out before April 15th. But I doubt it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, you need a pool. So with, uh, nice. with that, uh, between West Ossipi's airboat, Alton's, and uh, the Hovercraft in, in uh, Moultonboro, uh, we're sure that we can get mutual aid if there's any incidents that take place between them. The uh, Firefighters Association has also been looking at Utility One, which is the department's 2008 Chevy uh, 2500. The vehicle was originally purchased by the association for a forestry truck in the spring and fall, through the fall, and a utility truck in the, uh, the winter time. It has been a uh, member's request to replace the regular truck body with an aluminum flatbed, which would give uh, more room in the back for the current tank, pump, and equipment on the truck. Um, what they were looking at uh, was something like this. Uh, 
we're in the process as far as with the association looking at uh, um, quotes for that as far as the different things. Uh, one area that um, we found is candy trailer trailer sales, and that's in Candy, New Hampshire. Uh, Molten Burl has uh, done something uh, like this with one of their utility trucks, um, and had purchased the, uh, the uh, stuff from that uh, particular location. Um, the uh, what will happen is that uh, and I forgot to bring a picture of the, the current uh, truck with the with the bed. Um, what will happen is that the the different compartments will allow them to be lower and people to be able to use them more readily um, and compared to the ones that are sitting up on the uh, the truck bed itself now and do not have a lot of space in them. We're trying to look at something more user-friendly. Again, it would be something that the association is looking at as far as a project. The members had voted on spending up to $10,000 to to complete the project and because of uh, that amount of money, obviously, uh, anything over $5,000 has to be okay by this election. Also, have, have to have a hearing to yeah. accept the grant. Uh, the also, um, there's a possibility that the body itself is worth money as far the as current a, the current body, as far as trade in and, and the boxes mm -hmm. on that. And that uh, that is the town's property. Uh, the, ambu the ambulance has uh, transported one so far in 2019. Uh, and the Lakes Region Visiting Nurses. Uh, Association has requested a contract for our ambulance for uh, its hospice patients. Um, hospice patients don't usually get transported to the hospital unless absolutely necessary, but they were looking to see if we would be <coughs> their backup ambulance um, to Stortz uh, when the uh, patients need to be transported to the hospital, especially patients that are from Tuftonboro. Um, and uh, the surrounding communities. So when they say surrounding towns, it would be like Moultonboro and Wolfboro. Are they going to delineate that? I mean, yeah, well, that was one thing that this this was pretty rough to me as far as that goes. Mm -hmm. And then there was some things that it, to me was missing, like surrounding towns. I don't want to be going to New Hampton um, right. and right. Maconia and different areas right. as far as that goes. Uh, so that was uh why i was just bringing this to your attention I, it needs work as far as it goes um and maybe we even want to have the town attorney look at the contract as far as it goes but uh um i think that you know obviously our own people uh as far as uh, tuftenberg uh, that it would that it's not a bad idea for us to uh, be a backup to students to to take them if they need to go uh, in their end of life as far as uh, the different things. And that would, it would sunset at the end of the year? Yeah. Let's try it. But I think, as I said, the, the whole thing needs to be, the, the contract needs to be looked at and, and uh, a few things yeah, added to that. Yeah. Take mm -hmm. On the, uh, the last page is uh, the last uh, the ambulance transports, minus the names that, of the people that were uh, transported. Um, the one for 2019 is not out of this, uh, but I just wrote it in at the bottom to, uh, to show you that there was one, and that is what is outstanding as far as balance wise was the three thousand five hundred sixteen dollars and ninety six cents. So this <coughs> the twenty seven trips you have listed here mm -hmm. are seventeen and eighteen? Yes. Okay. And you've got an average trip of eight hundred and forty one dollars? Yep. And that's collected? Yes. Or collectible? Collectible. So we can be a lot of that better numbers in the fall, but yep. we can certainly budget for this income. Right. right. 
and depending on you know depending on how many trips. Uh, I can't remember if this. I didn't look this time last year if we had more than you know one transport as far as Amazon. Um It's hit a mess as far as uh, you know as far as uh, um, ambulance wise. Right. Wolf Pearl had three calls going on uh, a week ago, and they were able to get three ambulances for that. A, our, we we received we were headed there, got canceled, and in the process we got a call um, of our own that we ended up transporting the person because of the uh, the uh, <coughs> they had already spent whatever period of time with the patient, yeah. loaded the patient in, and the the other ambulance was coming from Moulton Berlin, and we were on the other end of town, so um, it it was just quicker to to do so, uh, but they would have provided us a. A rig, if uh, if we, we absolutely needed it right, in a particular case, but um, it's those days that uh, um, that you have four ambulances that are running that things just get busy, and, and there's other days that uh, you might not need that. You know? So yeah, the good news is nobody's getting hurt. The bad news is the ambulance is out picking somebody up. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I think if you look at the uh, visiting nurses contract and you can probably see another five or ten right. trips over the course of a year right. I think. Yeah depending on and in, in in most cases um, hospices to keep the person at home but sometimes they have to be transported um, as far as that goes so. Yeah so I'm just speculating a little bit here if you're averaging thirty thousand dollars worth of revenue a year, then over a ten year span you're bringing in three hundred three hundred thousand. So if you're spending three hundred thousand for an ambulance, you're kind of breaking even right. before you get into the staff and all the rest of it. But I mean it, it makes sense to have this in play. You might want to put together a spreadsheet just so you can track the months. Okay. See what the see how yeah. How much is Because you're going to, I mean, you've got Hannah now as a paramedic, so your staff and your ambulance with somebody. Right. So, yeah. So, and, and she she still is a call member as far as uh, everything. We obviously have not changed anything as far as full time people or, right. or anything like that. So, um, and are not looking at doing that. And her um, pay change, I mean, I. Her, her pay will not change until that uh, she's okay. actually operating as a, she'll get the increase for the MTA part of it, but okay. until she's operating at the paramedic level, then they'll have to be, then there would be another. Um, and how long is change. this probationary? It, the probationary period is not a uh, set time. It, it's a certain amount of calls. Uh, it's, a, it's 20 ALS calls and 10 BLS calls that she actually uh, goes out on, mm -hmm. is the primary operation person for, and documentation and, and things like that to make sure that uh, um, that is, uh, everything is, you know, on the up and up so for her operations. That's probably a year. It, it, could, right. it could take a year. Yeah. Um, we're, we're not running, you know, in some other area, it might be six months. Uh, where they're seeing 10, 15 calls a day. But with us, it, it could take uh, upwards of, as far as a year. So with, with one that. concern that you should have is that she's invested some amount of money into yep. getting this. And you don't want to draw out the well, increase to a point where she's looking. Well, my, my concern is that, uh, that the person is uh, operational. Right. Um, mm -hmm. My concern is the <coughs> The people that they're getting the best care as possible um, with that, with someone that's fairly new as far as to the paramedicine, uh, you do need to take the time for that. Where you have someone like Skip, that he came in with 30 years, uh, he was running upwards of 15 to 20 calls a day with uh, Exeter, and you know that he is. Um, you know, 100% up and running. So he has to get acclimated with, with the department <coughs> and, uh, you know, the, the town-wise. Um, 
when when you become a new paramedic, there's a lot of things that go along with that, uh, a lot of responsibility. So I don't want to set her up to fail, uh, to just stick her out there and say, okay, you're blessed, and go. And the, the hospital is 100% behind uh, that. Uh, and just so you know, I, I, my concern is that it gets drawn out yeah. because we're not a busy town, right? And you know. She's just going to chance of going someplace else. Yeah. yeah. So I yeah. don't want to start again. So like, keep oh, an yeah. eye on it. Oh yeah. Look, no, most definitely the, we, the uh, nice we thing, will 100%. The nice right. thing is this is a compliment. It's not Chief's first rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we've had some issues as far as um, past paramedic issues. So uh, I, I have been very cautious, uh, you know, as far as going forward. Um, so we want to make sure that uh, um, just the town is uh, protected, department, and, and everything that uh, that we're not just putting. And the patient out. gets the best yep. care possible. Sure. Which Absolutely. which we hope that they you know 100 percent that yes. they are. So, so are you going to review this DNA? Most definitely. And, and if do uh, you want to do it with town attorney or do you, do you want to just go back and forth with the director of the DNA? Uh, whatever you feel is, I, I made a copy for, for each of you to, to look at, because uh, you've seen contracts uh, all the time. Um, whatever you feel is uh, most prudent as far as What that. I would suggest is that you work with DNA until you get a, the a things that, you, one. that are reasonable. Before we sign a contract, we'll have town council. Uh, sure, review it just to make sure that yep. we're not missing something. Yep. But you can go. But you've already identified that you know we need to tighten up a little bit about travel. What and where. you know what towns we're going to service uh, in, in this. And you can do within a range of mileage. Yep. Yep. I mean, surrounding towns within whatever miles. Yeah. Yep. And you can also do a um, preliminary agreement. So let me, let's say she calls you this afternoon and has something that needs transport and smells and stuff. Right. And there's no reason not to do that. Yes. So. Yeah. 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 And, and yeah. anybody yeah. within the I think you've got I think, I think it's a. You've got the ability to do this. To do that. Right I think that's a fear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. All right. Anything else yeah. for the chief? And the Zingos. Yes. Nice job. So when did you expect to have that body project running? Uh, we're, we're looking at uh, the, the captain is gone today and tomorrow at Special Olympics. Uh, he's taking two personal days to, uh, to help out at the Special Olympics in the North Country. Um, that is a project that he has been working on. And as far so as the, the information, it, it would be within the next month mm -hmm. that uh, we'd have further info. Great. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Have a safe day. You too. All right. Move on to the signature file. Second page, I should say. Uh, the the, the second the page is just the ambulance. Uh, the revenue. Revenue for them. Okay. So, Thank you. Uh, first item, we have a uh, request for extension to file on a. Uh, on a September intent to cut for uh, PID 6 2 20 through 23. And uh, is requesting an extension to file uh, to allow cutting to continue uh, through June 30th. I reviewed it and I'll make a motion that. Chair Simon. Okay. I'll, I reviewed it and I second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And we have uh, a new uh, intent to cut for 33-9 uh, and 43-3-4. I didn't have a chance to look at that. Thanks. Yep. Uh, I have a question for Karen. Mm -hmm. 
on that pro property there and that end of that landowner there, is he all caught up on back uh, timber taxes? I will, ha I will have to confirm that with Jackie tomorrow um, okay. because that came in after, I remember I, we didn't have time to clear it with it. It must have came in Friday afternoon. So we haven't had a chance to do that part yet. For next meeting, just make sure that all the all the bases are covered. Sounds good. All right. Uh, so let's update. What have we been doing? What have we been doing? I don't know. What have we been doing? Go ahead. I had a number of uh, welfare things that I was doing. And has, I've also been working on the town report. I guess we should settle on who's doing what at some point in time at the town meeting. Yeah, and in the past we've done that in our omnibus meeting on election Tuesday, day, which I think is, yeah, yeah works, works for me. I suppose we can do it today, but you know, I'm, I'm happy to. No, no. We're going to be around all, all, all day. To, yeah, so. Tuesday's fine. All right. So, um, Floyd? Uh, on the annual town report, I thought it was a stellar job. Uh, first of all, the quality, uh, uh, you know, you open it up and there's no blurred printing and, and uh, it's easy to read. And, and uh, to Karen and the department heads, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have a TAC meeting Wednesday <coughs> and on Tuesday, I'm driving Clay Gallagher to the Durham transfer station that has won awards for recycling and, and whatever. I have a contact, a friend uh, who's a council member there, and he set up a meeting um, with, the, with the guy who runs that. So um, Clay's interested in going. And if there's anyone who, is, who likes to borrow ideas, it certainly is Clay. All right. That's, I'm trying to. So, in terms of things I have going on this week, Ag Commission's meeting, a uh, monthly meeting tomorrow afternoon at 4 o'clock right here. Um, they're uh, <coughs> getting ready to do the town gardens. And uh, I understand there have already been s several people inquiring about getting their plot identified. And, and, and moving forward. Uh, one of the things this year is uh, the compost pile that was way in the back is being moved closer to the front where it's more accessible and that will affect some of the garden plot usage, move some things around a little bit. Uh, that's the main of what's going on there at this point. Uh, Does that include the amount of grass being moved? Uh, the grass clippings? Th that that includes the compost pile, okay, and, and when you say that, I'm not sure which, <coughs> the amount of grass is... is about four years collection of oh. grass from the cemetery. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 don't know, yeah, I don't know that that's part of the compost pile, okay. so I, I don't know, I honestly don't know on that. Um, the watershed um, committee is meeting at Three o'clock on Wednesday here. This is uh, the effort that's being uh, led by the uh, Lakeland Wasaki Association on the contract that they have a consultant development and watershed plan. Just for an update on that. I think that's it for me for this week. And the nine hours you spent. Oh I, yeah, we had a, a long day in uh, in mediation over. Um, um, a uh, assessment uh, challenge that's pending with the um, Board of Tax and Land Appeal uh, from uh, the Hampshire Electric Co-op on their uh, distribution property. And we uh, slugged it on all day on Thursday and uh, got to something that, uh, that I think is reasonable and should be presented to us uh, within the next week or so. Mm -hmm. so See where that goes. All right.
Let's move on to correspondence. We have it right here. We have uh, some back and forth on. Uh, I don't know if you had a chance to see that. Uh, the, the police. Oh, oh right. The police department. Police uh, <coughs> station study. Uh, and uh, actually, Andy gave me some renderings this morning. If I can find them here. Of the three options that they're looking at, we're certainly early days at this point. Uh, but I think we're on on track with uh, with them now on some additional information on the site here. Uh, so this is a that's over by Central Fire Station. Mm -hmm. uh, this is location across from the library, and this is uh, a uh, very preliminary on an expansion at the current location. <coughs> So this is the same building. It looks like yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then this was a sort of a footprint here. And what to uh, be. So we'd have to yeah, the public garden. Yes. Yeah. That would uh, would involve moving parking. That direction, right. yeah. Moving some trees. Yeah. And, and also, well, no, we can't go that way. No. That was the cemetery. Yeah. And <coughs> all those uh, what was cemetery lots. Um, old ones. Go ahead, Mr. Yeah. All right. Next correspondence uh, uh, from uh, Jane Perini in Portsmouth has been following the education funding issues. Uh, note last Wednesday that uh, HB 709 as amended passed the House on a voice vote to 262 to 82, and, and the amendment removed all references to taking the excess swept, which is the statewide education property tax, uh, and removing it from the locality and taking it to the state. So that's off the table there. There's still apparently some rumblings that they may try and attach it to another bill or introduce another bill elsewhere to incorporate it. Um, and that's something I think we need to Keep a close eye on because that have a huge impact. Yeah. That, that um. would take uh, the swept that we collect in Tufton Borough and currently goes as part of what funds the Governor Wentworth School District and removes it, which means that those dollars have to be made up on local taxes. So I, I don't have that number in front of me, but I understand it's, it's huge. The current revenue goes directly to the school district and then go down to some place in Concord and be paid administrative No, it's, it's, uh, it's, well, it's a, it's a, it's we, as efficient as it can be. It's, um, it's money that we collect in taxes and we pay currently to our school district. But the way it's set up for accounting purposes what we collect for the school district is two different buckets, right. but all of it goes to the school yes. district. And uh, uh, if the swept goes to the state, then the one bucket goes to Concord, and we have to make up money yes. the school district from elsewhere. Uh, the other thing that is um, uh, in play still, it doesn't affect us, is the, I think it's called equalization? Stabilization. Stabilization. Yes. Uh, and that's, uh, that's money that goes to uh, the uh, the less well-off towns to help support education, and 
So, uh, and some of the towns in our district receive stabilization money. My understanding is that doesn't directly affect the school budget, but it does affect those towns because it's revenue that they get now that they wouldn't get that they'd have to make up through taxation to pay their school bills. And it's being diminished a few percentage points each year. So, it affects yeah. Austin. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm not sure how many towns get affected by that. All right. Uh, next thing is we have the, uh, the quotes here for clean out of the 107 Union Wharf property. Uh, we have four quotes. And uh, Jack has recommended that we go with. Charles Smith. Not Let's see. The first one. <clears throat> Charles Smith. Uh, one day, yes. two day, three day guy. Uh, whatever. Yes. Right. Uh, yep. And uh, so his. And his quote is a maximum of 5400 uh, and that would be mitigated by any value that comes out of there that can be sold off. So, Are we ready to award this or do we have to wait the 90 days to get through that one? Um, I, I uh, My understanding is that we don't have to wait to uh, until her redemption window is. I uh, yeah, I'm not sure. All right. So, good question. Uh, and let's let's uh, revisit this next week. Okay. Would you check with Rick and just make sure? I mean, we've identified with the vehicles that it, it's good to wait. But uh, okay. Yeah, we have to. Yeah. Who handles the vehicles? Is that a separate issue? It is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is our lawyer working on that, or is our police chief? Or uh, what is we we have, we have we've identified a, a method as we talked about before, which is with a a, a, a record business to remove the property. Uh, we haven't selected anybody at this point, so. But on advice of council, uh, with respect to the vehicles, we need to wait until the redemption period is up, which is early. It's also a titling issue, right? Um, that's something that the that the uh, the record will take care. Of, so, yep. All right. There's a link. I don't see anything. All right. So. This news link does include um, the schedule for the uh, local officials' conferences. I guess that's why you stuck this in the. Yes, I didn't know if I knew you wanted yeah. to. If you want me to register. So. Yeah, those are all in. They're all over the place. Uh, I haven't seen in North Country. Uh, this side of North Country. Try to think of. I looked over the whole thing. And, uh, they're in here someplace. Mm -hmm. to me to note in this issue that the court case that they highlighted was the uh, uh, the Supreme Court decision in the Dietz versus Town of Tuftenboro which upheld the, uh, the proper action of our ZBA in that case uh, against the challenge. So, uh, let's see. All right. Second page. <laughs> so, local officials' workshops, Rochester, Peterborough, Lebanon, Sugar Hill, Concord. 
So the closest one is Rochester, I would say, or yeah. or coin flip, and that's April 10th, uh, Concord June 8th. So, all right. Next up is procurement policy, and uh, we have. Policy with uh, Rick's suggestions. For wording changes. Mm -hmm. uh, we've all had a chance to look that over. Yes. All right. Do uh, you want to just incorporate his changes? Uh, I didn't see anything that was unreasonable in there. Yeah, I, so I thought there was, again, right on. Right. So are we, uh, are we ready to adopt these as a procurement policy? Um, do we want to have them, could you just make a motion? I will, I will make a motion. <laughs> do we want to have them in final form before you vote? Uh, yes. So this, is, this, is, this is final. Oh, yeah. oh that's final Does this incorporate the changes? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's just moving right. Then I'll entertain your motion there, Floyd. I move we accept uh, as written. All right. I'll second. Any discussion? I, I, I'm good. I, All right. Yeah. All those in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Opposed? And Karen, can I have a copy of the final one? Absolutely. Thank you. One thing I just thought of I'd like to mention is, did you see the jump and increase with the, uh, did you see that big number increase on one of the pages? 125. Yeah, that's one thing I meant to mention too. Yeah, that's based on that. Is that seven. fine? Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's he, he brought it in line with the 35 stretch. to 120. Oh, okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. All right. Final copy of the Cow Island Amusement Survey from last year, year before. Is that going to be coming up? I, I thought we I didn't remember that. This, this is subject now being published uh, again. No, this is this is the uh, survey that we did in 2017 of the right of way easement. Oh. Okay. Uh, that gets us uh, across the neighbor's property back to the center of the island. This so, is a yellow highlighted section. Yep. Right here. Yep. This is a 50 foot right of way across uh, lot 25 2 136, uh, strictly for, for the purpose of accessing the town owned uh, land in the center of the island. So, as we talk about uh, trail maintenance and other things on the center of the island at that time it's identified that we didn't have clearly defined where uh, the easement was so we now have it clearly defined excuse me would one of those copies go to conservation and then stay here is that is that the right for um i guess so okay, yeah, yeah, I yeah. Think, yeah for sure yep. okay <clears throat> so I think that's what we've got in today's yep. correspondence. Do we have any other business? Other than I, we do need to have non-public. Mm -hmm. uh, I think for uh, a couple of pieces of legal, legal correspondence that came in. Uh, just that it's March, and I think we have a couple more. To uh, performance. Yes, we do. Yes. And, and we may want to spend some time today working on those. Right. Yep. And has the planning board submitted uh, their review of that employee? Not, not that I'm aware of. Uh, have you seen it? No, I just want to make sure we, we grant her a raise. <laughs> yep. So, okay. So, any other business? Any questions? Yes. Uh, January and February have now kind of gone, and 
I'm sure that the invoices from February are up to date, but do we have a, a, any kind of a sense or a feel for how our uh, winter maintenance budget is going? We do. Excellent. Yeah. So, uh, it's, it's here someplace, and uh, we, are, we are well into the yeah. winter maintenance budget at this point. So, winter, we are at 78% uh, spent. So, I don't, no, I don't, yeah, we have, I guess, year to date expenses 176,000. Yeah. 78% spent. That's what I'm seeing. maintenance budget. Okay. <clears throat> That's what I'm seeing. Um, the overall highway budget is 37%, which is. Right, that's your okay. Um, All right. My other. I just have a request. I would like you folks to review the snow plowing policy and the winter maintenance policy that are available on the website. Uh, the snow plowing policy had spots in it for re a periodic review, which has not been done since it was signed by Selectman Duffy, Stockman, and Sundquist. Uh, if you would, please just look those over. That's all I ask. Something else to do next Tuesday. Yep, that's right. Ah, good time. Do you want to say? I can get another copy. Oh, yeah, thanks. Okay. All right. Anything else? Yes, um, there is an educational forum. I believe with Andrew Walensky at Hobbs Tavern tonight in West Ossipi. Um, I think it's seven. And um, we're anticipating one in Wolfboro in May. And um, some bills have passed the House, but not the Senate yet, and they could be vetoed by the governor, so. Right. Yeah. And I heard there was change. I think they did legislate that they would start giving 18% into retirement, teachers' retirement, which I would think would help with some of the budgets. But, um, I also read in the Independent that the county budget is proceeding along ahead of schedule. When no. Dave Babson is... Well, it's March 1st. It really isn't ahead of schedule. Well, it, it's proceeding <laughs> really well, and uh, I guess Dave Babson has said he's never seen this happen before. <laughs> so, the ship is, uh, I guess, getting organized. Well, that's what happens when you put Democrats in there for a while. Well, people are working together. The subcommittees are doing their right. jobs, I understand. them, and, and they're mixed. So it's not just, it's mixed parties, so the right, but everyone you know, has to work together. You know, a lot of the roadblocks you get rid of, McConkey, Chandler, mm -hmm. you get rid of those roadblocks and the other people can work together. Mm -hmm. I guess it's, they're working together. Okay. All right, so we need to do a non-public for uh, new research. Uh, Yep. So that, that would be 91A3, Roman 2, Karen L. I'll second. Yes. I'll be yes. Thank you, General. Thank you. Well, it's March, March now, but this is.